In this file, we're going to learn how to get input from a file. So far, whenever we've gotten input, we have got it by having the user type on the keyboard. But there are often times when we want to store data and be able to keep it in a file and then use it in a program later. So that's what we're going to learn about today. So to do that, first we have to have a file and that has data in it. So let's go ahead and create one. I'm going to go to File, New, Empty File. And it said, do you want this to be this new file to be in the active project? And here, yes, we're, this will just make it part of the project. And so we can go ahead and add that here. And it comes up to the folder where our .cpp file is. There's, that's the important part. It needs to be located in exactly the same folder as our .cpp file. We need to give it a name. I'm going to be storing scores in here, so I'm going to call it scores.txt. You need to make sure that it's all files as your choice. There's lots of different types here, but the one we need for this is all files, and then we set the extension to .txt and save it. Here you can leave the defaults on this folder, on this window, and now we can just simply, I'm going to type in scores, so 91, 87, 79, 63, 94, and there I did five scores. So now I can go in my main, and if I want to read from this file, I need to add a new header file that we haven't used before. And this is fstream, is the header file that has the code to be able to do file input and output. Then I need to define a variable. And the variable that I need to define is for input files, it needs to be of type ifstream. So this is the type of file and type of variable, and it's a file stream object, and I get to pick whatever name I want. So I'm going to call it fn. That just is a common thing to call it. It helps me think of cn. cn stands for console input, and fn can stand for file input. But you can name it anything you want. It's a variable, so you can name it whatever you want. And then you need to open it and connect it to the actual file that we made. To do that, you use the variable name you selected. So here, fn.open is the function that we're going to call. And then inside these parentheses, I'm going to put quotes. And inside there, put exactly the name of the file that I created, scores.txt. All right, now I have created that file. And so, or created the file stream object that I can use to connect to that file. And now I can simply use fn with the, ex with the extraction operators, just like I do with cn. But I need to store this in a variable. So I'm going to create a variable called score. And then I can fn to and store it in that variable. And then print out the score is. And type it out. And now I can run it. And there it goes. The score is 91. Let's go see what it did. It went to this file, scores.txt. It begins at the very beginning of the file, and it read that first value, 91. All right, but there are five scores in there, so if I want to do this five times, I'm going to go ahead and put that in a for loop. And I can create a for loop that happens five times. i equals 0, i less than 5, i plus plus. And there I have a for loop that'll happen five times. Oops, except I capitalized that. Okay, and then quotes. And then I'll simply move my code into there and put it inside that for loop and run it again. And it happened five times. Let's compare that with what was in the file. So there we go. It read the 91, the 87, the 79, the 63, and 94. And so that's how, if we know how many, how many um, data values are in the file, we can read it exactly using a for loop. There are other times when we have a file like this that has lots of them in, and we don't know how many, or that it may vary from time to time. So if we have a file like this, I'm just going to copy paste that in there then we can't use a for loop because we don't know how many. 
So we could use a while loop. And let's remember the details about a while loop. Remember that we need to start with a condition that is true when we want to keep going and false when we want to stop. And what I'm going to use here for the condition is if in, it's actually an, the read statement. In fact, see it? It's this read statement right here. And this is going to actually do the read, so I have to get rid of this one so I don't do two reads in the same loop. So this read becomes my condition. It turns out that this read returns a true when it's able to read a value. And when it gets to the end of the file and there are no more values to read, this function will return a false. So that way it's true as long as there's a value to read. And as soon as it tries to read and there's none there, it turns to false, which is when we want to stop. So this becomes our condition. The other thing we need is to start the loop or prime the loop, and that means we want it to have a valid value the first time we come. Well, the first time we get to this while loop, the first thing it does is read a value and store it in score. So this condition becomes the prime of the loop as well, because it automatically primes it and the first time that it comes in. Then this becomes our work. All we're doing is printing the score out, and then we need to provide a way to stop the loop. Well, when we get done with the loop, we come back up and we read the next score. And this becomes our way to end the loop. Because as we go around and do this over and over again, eventually we'll read to the end of the file and this will turn false and that's our way to stop it. So this read is our condition. It's the way we prime the loop and it's the way we stop the loop. Let's go ahead and run this program. And there it is. Let's make sure we got them all. And the way we do that is we go look at the file and compare it. So here's our score.txt and let's go to the very end and see if we got all the ones at the end. And 70, 55, 88, 70, oops, I didn't get there. There we go. 55, 88, 79, 78. Yep, sure enough, they're there at the end. Now let's go to the top. Make sure we got the top ones. Usually if you get the top ones and the bottom ones, all the middle ones are there. So let's see how we did at the top. 82, 77, 45, 91. Sure enough, we got all the values. Let's talk about some of the other work that we can do with this data rather than print it out. So let's go ahead and do things like count it. So we can get a counter here. We want to set this equal to zero. And another thing that we can do would be a total. And if we're going to do an accumulator, we want to start it out as zero as well. And now instead of printing out those values, we can do the work of counting them. So we can simply increment count. We can accumulate it, so we take the total and add the current val the score that we just read to it. And that way we count and accumulate. And now outside of the loop, we can go ahead and print out their R and count scores in the file. And we can do things like compute average average equals total divided by count. Now that's integer division, so we don't want to do that. So let's go ahead and do a static cast and cast it to a double. And then if we've computed that average, we can print it out. The average is all right now let's go ahead and run that and there we go it ran through that whole entire file read every score and it tells us there are 176 scores in the file and the average is 77.5852 now we can go ahead and read all the data we want from a file. It doesn't matter if this is really short like five or kind of long like 176 or thousands of scores long. That would made no difference. We'd made no change to the file, right? We made no change to the loop when we made that file so much bigger. So no matter what size it is, we can keep that loop the same and it will read the whole file.